Group life is to be found in insect societies like ants and bees. The ants live together in colonies. They have their own methods of building homes, obtaining food, dividing their labor. As is well known, the whole colony of bees lives in honeycomb. Thus, group life as well as family life is not human invention. They are really biological phenomena to be seen at the various levels of life. Social psychology is concerned with the interactions between individuals or between groups and individuals. Thus, it is a study of the behavior of people in social situations. Society is a web of social relationships. Social relations are established through mutual behavior of and intercourse between the various members of society, males and females, children, men old and young. The behavior takes the form of mutual activity. In this way, social relations depend upon the social interaction of the constituent member of society. Some of the other kind of social interaction is set into motion whenever two of its members come into contact. The various groups in society are always undergoing strains of mutual conflict, competition, cooperation and synthesis or other activity. All these are social interactions. Meaning and definition of social interaction. The term social interaction is applicable only to the action which produces some definite influence upon social relations that exist among human beings. Hence, social interaction serves to establish mental relations among persons. Individuals tend to be influenced by the ideas, achievements and emotions of other people. Thus, social interaction is the reciprocal influence mutually exerted by human being through inter-stimulation and mutual response. Man lives in a social environment. It is only natural to him to have some relations with the fellow members of the society. It is equally essential for an individual to have mental as well as physical contacts with such people. Every person influences other people according to his status in society and the role which is assigned to him. These activities on contact and communication are given the name of social interaction. Social interaction is a communicative interaction. Interaction is the simple form of social process. In any society, all the constituents, be they individuals or group of individuals, are perpetually engaged in solving problems and attaining some predetermined ends. In the process of performing both these functions, they also influence each other. This influence is social interaction. The name social interaction can be applied to all those actions that either serve to establish some social relationships or to introduce some change and modification in the existing social relationships. Some of the more important definitions of social interactions are as follows. GIST Social interaction is the reciprocal influence that human beings exert on each other through interstimulation and response. AW3 by social interaction is meant the mutual influence that individuals and groups have upon one another in their attempts to solve problems and in their striving towards goals. Given and given. By social interaction, we refer to social relations of all sort in function, dynamic social relations of all times, whether such relations exist between individual and individual, between group and group and group and individual as the case may be. Eldridge and Merrill Social interaction is thus the general process whereby two or more people are in the meaningful contact as a result of which their behavior is modified however slightly. Basic conditions of social interactions It would be evident from the above account of social interaction that there are two basic conditions of social interaction social contact and social communication. Social contact 
Social contact differs from physical or bodily contact, bodily contact being unnecessary for social contact. Social contact can be established through the medium of radio, letters, telephone, telegraphic contact and other media of communication even between people who are separated by thousands of miles of land and water. However, social contacts are strengthened by physical contact. While physical contact in the various forms such as handshaking, embracing increases social contact, it also on the other hand symbolizes the preeminence and strength of social relations. Social contact has its origin in the mutual response between various groups or individuals. It is social contact that is the beginning point of social interaction. Social contacts can be positive as well as negative. Positive social contacts tend to benevolence, cooperation, mutual understanding and assimilation. Negative social contacts create hatred, discord and conflict. Similarly, when there is a direct personal contact between the various parties, it is called a primary contact. However, when this contact takes on an impersonal air and is achieved through the mediation of some of the other agency or individual, it is called secondary. In addition to simple classification, another subdivision of social contact is the one into the temporary contact that tend to remain for a short time and into the relatively permanent contacts that are established for a long time and continue to exercise their influence. Communication Social contacts are always established through the medium of some sense organ and an object can be perceived by the sense organ only when the object causes communication with that sense organ. Hence, the means of communication are essential adjuncts of social contact. The more important means of communication are the sense organs of man, language, script, gestures, symbols, radio, television, post and telegraph services, newspapers and televisions. In fact, society cannot even be conceived without communication. Mechanisms of social interaction, different thinkers differ in their opinion regarding the number of forms or mechanisms that social interactions take. Some go as far as to count no more than two forms of social interactions, conjunctive and disjunctive. Most of these sociologists have accepted the following major forms of social interaction. Competition, conflict, accommodation, assimilation, cooperation. Of these, the first two are disjunctive while the last three are conjunctive. Let us now study these mechanisms of social interaction in detail. Disjunctive process, conflict and competition. Both conflict and competition are basic social process that are disintegrative in nature. Both are forms of non-cooperation and opposition. However, they also differ from each other in considerable respects. Competition Competition plays an important role in the life of persons, other groups. It increases efficiency. Bogardus has maintained that the competition is a contest to obtain something which does not exist in a quantity sufficient to meet the demand of everyone. It is an impersonal, unconscious and continuous struggle between individuals or groups for things which are limited in supply. The following characteristics determine the nature of competition. It is an unconscious action. It is concerned with the subject and not the individuals. Therefore, besides the knowledge of the subject, it is an unconscious action. It is an impersonal action. The difference between competition and struggle is that competition is always impersonal whereas struggle is personal, is a continuous activity. Competition never ends, it always tends to increase. For example, competition in the acquisition of wealth is a universal action. Competition is found in each society as people everywhere wish to process things which are limited in supply. Moreover, competition is found in every class of people, students, producers, laborers and artists.
It enables the development of both the individual and the nation. Forms of competition Economic competition found in production, exchange and distribution as well as consumption in the field of economic activities. Cultural competition is found among different cultures. Taking the history of any country, it can be seen that there has always been a great difference in cultures of the natives and the invaders. Social competition. To get a high status in society, everybody seems to be engaged in competitive activity. Racial competition. In South Africa, there is an intense competition between the black and the white races. Political competition. In all countries, competition is obvious between the various political parties and even between the different members of a political party to obtain political power. Similarly, in the international circle too, there is always a diplomatic competition between different nations. In addition to the above mentioned forms, there are two other forms of competition, the personal and the impersonal. Personal competition is often termed a rivalry while impersonal competition is bound to occur between groups and not between individual members. Conflict Competition gradually changes into rivalry, which in turn changes into conflict. Thus, conflict is a modified form of struggle. Conflict connotes a desire for violence, a desire for revenge. It is a deliberate attempt to oppose, resist or coerce the will of the opponent. Briefly, the following characteristics of conflict are particularly important. Conflict is a conscious action. In conflict, the competitors try to defeat each other consciously. It evokes the deepest emotions and the strongest passions and results into great concentration of attention and effort. Conflict is a personal activity. Conflict is rise to defeat the antagonist and not to achieve any particular goal. The chief aim of conflict is to cause harms or serve loss to the antagonist. Conflict lacks continuity. Conflict is not a continuous process, it occurs intermittently. Conflict is universal. Conflict is found in each and every part of human society. Forms of conflict. Conflict is a universal process. Broadly speaking, its chief forms are the following. Personal conflict. Conflict arises between different ideas and aims. Class conflict. Conflict arises between classes having different interests. Caste conflict. Superiority complex has caused a conflict between different castes in India and this process is still continuing. Racial conflict. Sometimes a particular race somehow manages to acquire the notion that it is the best fitted to all human races to dominate and govern the world and that this would do the world a lot of good. Others, particularly the governor, usually do not feel inclined to accept this notion and the result is the inviolable conflict. Group conflict. In politics, the different groups having different interests and motives try to fulfill their own interests and this leads to conflict. In this way, group conflict can arise anywhere. International conflict. Sometimes a serious international conflict occurs when a nation tries to suppress the other to fulfill some particular aim. Conjunctive process. Accommodation, assimilation, cooperation. Accommodation. Accommodation is the first step from conflict to reconciliation and cooperation. Man cannot always remain conflicting against the environment and all the surrounding people. One has to come to some sort of understanding with life. Coming to an understanding or common agreement is accommodation. This is an unconscious process that is forever active in some or the other sphere of life. An interesting and suggestive case is of the accommodations that have to be made by a newly wed bride. She has to adjust to an entire set of people unknown to her who 
constituted her new family immediately after her marriage. It is only natural that she should feel irritated by the constant attention of all those around her. However, she has no choice but to come to an understanding and terms with them to avoid conflict and struggle. Accommodation is the art of living harmoniously. Among living beings, man possesses the ability of accommodation in the highest degree. People must accommodate in every new situation in which they may happen to find themselves. Be it in a new country, a new society, new caste, social circle, neighborhood or any other sphere. Accommodation is also a condition. It is a condition or a state of mental and social understanding and peace. Every individual is born under a particular set of circumstances, some of which are good and some bad. Individuals must accommodate themselves. In brief, accommodation consists in the avoiding and delay of a conflict with disagreeable circumstances. In this process, there is neither complete conformity with the circumstances nor any conflict. The contending forces are adjusted to balance. In this way, it is a very foundation of a social organization. Accommodation and adjustment Accommodation is not adjustment. The two processes differ in the following. Accommodation, adjustment, unconscious activity, conscious activity, both external and internal. Only external is a later stage of adjustments, is the first step towards accommodation. To illustrate, if a nation is attacked by some other nation which has aggressive designs upon it, it first repeals the attack vigorously but when it is faced with inevitable defeat. It adjusts to these circumstances. This adjustment then leads to gradual accommodation and toleration between the victor and the vanquished. Accommodation has the following characteristics. Accommodation is the nature result of conflict. Accommodation arises out of conflict and keeps it from being actually put into practice. If there is no conflict, there can be no question of any accommodation. Accommodation is mainly an unconscious activity. The process of accommodation continues to act in an unconscious condition. Man's social environment is constantly changing and it also continually influences the individual since an individual is constantly engaged in accommodation consciously and subconsciously to new circumstances as they occur. Accommodation is a universal activity. The process of accommodation is forever active everywhere in human society. Accommodation is a mixture of love and hatred. Love leads to cooperation while hatred leads to conflict. Both love and hatred are constituents of accommodation. Accommodation is a continuous process. The process of accommodation is forever active in the individual's life and every sphere of society. Assimilation Assimilation is a form of social adjustment. In this process, the individual or group being to absorb slowly and gradually somewhat unconsciously the new circumstances in which it finds itself. It results in the modification of attitudes. For example, in many parts of India, the Hindus and Muslims have become so intimate and well acquainted with each other that they have assimilated many points of each other's culture into their own and have made them integral part of their own social conduct. The process of assimilation has become immersively more comprehensive with an unusual spurt in the development and invention of the means of transportation and communication whose direct impact is felt in increased social contact and considerable propagation of ideas and thoughts, both of which are essential for assimilation. Assimilation is both a process and a state. It is a cultural process. When different cultures come into contact, originally it is the sentiment of a mutual conflict that is most prominent, but when they gradually assimilate elements from each other, 
they develop a more tolerant approach towards each other. This is the process of assimilation. The following factors promote assimilation. Toleration. Intimate the close social relations are essential for assimilation to occur and these are impossible if there is no tolerance. It is only when people who believe in one culture and prepare to tolerate the proximate existence of people who uphold cause of a different culture that they can be influenced by the culture the other upholds. It is here that the process of assimilation finds its root. Intimate social relationships. The next factor of toleration that helps the process of assimilation is intimate and close social relationships and contacts. The process of assimilation progresses in direct proportion to the growth of social relationships. Amalgamation. Assimilation is further encouraged by amalgamation since it leads to creation of blood relationships. Blood being thicker than water, these relationships are more intimate and strong and they wield their influence upon people by making them impress each other, thus accelerating the process of assimilation. Equality of opportunity for economic progress. Economic inequality leads to jealousy, hatred and conflict. If people get the same opportunities for economic progress as their neighbors, social intimacy increases and assimilation progresses. Cooperation. Cooperation is the form of social interaction in which two or more people work for the achievement of a common end. For example, the aim of all the teachers in a college is the maintenance of a high standard of education and creating and maintaining a respectable position of the college in a social circles. Hence, they all cooperate with each other. If a teacher does not care for maintaining a high level of education in the college or its honor and respect in society and desires to cause indiscipline and disorder in the institution, then they are not cooperating with the other teachers. The government of state runs successfully only when the administrators and the administered extend their full cooperation to each other. If the administrator choose to change the administrators, they withdraw their cooperation. It was the same process that led to Indians under the guidance of Mahatma Gandhi to refuse to cooperate with the British government. Thus, the process of cooperation involves two elements, those of common end and organized efforts. For example, the teachers in an educational institution combine and organize their effort to maintain both a high level of education within the institution and its respected place in society. Kinds of cooperation Most of the sociologists have accepted the following three kinds of cooperation. Primary is that which is found in evidence in primary group such as the family. In this, there is an identity of interest between the individual and the group. The achievement of interests of the group includes the attainment of the individual interest. In this way, in the cooperation with the primary groups, there is no distinction between the aims and the means used for their achievement. Every member considers cooperation essentially in each and every condition. Secondary is found in secondary groups. One finds cooperation among economic, political, social and religious groups, factories, governments and societies and religious associations because of an identity of interest. These interests cannot be achieved if the individual strives for them in his individual capacity. Hence, secondary cooperation is considered essential. Tertiary characteristics the social interaction between various big and small social groups. This cooperation leads to mutual adjustment and adoption of these groups to each other. In this way, all these three kinds of cooperation are essential for society. Conclusion The very roots of society are based on social interactions. Hence, the study of social interactions is not only important but actually invaluable or essential for the sociologists. 
social interaction is the basis of not only society but of culture as well. Both culture and society are the products of social interaction. Thus, society has risen out of social interactions. They form the ground on which culture arises and thus ensure its continued existence. Hence, the study of social interactions should in fact be the first step to the study of society itself. The understanding of social interaction is an essential prerequisite for the understanding of social relations. While cooperation helps to do things, competition assures that they will be done well. Competition are very closely associated. In fact, competition has an important hand in causing a rapid development in individual and society as its chief aim is to move towards progress. However, advantageous it may be, it should not be left uncontrolled because then its disadvantages will overcome the advantages and result will be harmful to the society. Conflict is very important for both the individuals and society. It needs a struggle to solve the social as well as the personal problems. No person can rise without struggling and the higher a person rises, the greater the struggle. People have to struggle hard to establish and run the associations to increase the production of the in-country to retain the freedom of the nation and progress in any sphere of activity. The importance of cooperation is made abundantly clear by the reflection that the very existence of society depends upon the mutual cooperation between the male and female of the species. It is by mutual cooperation that a man and a woman bring up their offspring. The cooperation of the members of a family is essential for the socialization of the child and the development of the various potential capacities. Outside the family, the child is influenced by contact with the teachers and classmates at school and colleges at workplace. After individuals enter the poorly wedded state, their entire life is about cooperation and mutual agreements without which a happy marital life is impossible both for the husband and wife. The psychological, mental and even the spiritual needs of the individual remain unsatisfied if there is no cooperation with the people of the society.